Sorry about the mess. But these guys had to find out how to make this food that's gonna drive their fish absolutely insane. Put them into a feeding frenzy. All right, uh, basic ingredients that we're going to need for a specific type of fish food that we're gonna be making for a certain fish in the gallery. Not you guys. And not you guys. Ooh, ooh, although this tank looks really good. Not you. You guys need a specific food that can also be used to feed the discus. We're uh, into a two week quarantine and I've run out of certain fish foods for some of the fish. So I gotta make my own. That'll get us by for a couple weeks. Plus I really want, oh, I really want to pack on some size to the piranha as well as the discus. And I know just the food that's going to do it. Now I don't need to make like a color enhancing fish food right now like I typically would using things like a stacks of thin, yellow peppers, you name it. All the other things that I've written about in the book about fish diets and how to achieve certain things with them depending on the type of fish and uh, requirements that you actually have. You know what? You know what I want to do? I want to take a piece of this beef heart and see if the piranha will eat it just raw. All right, guys. <laughs> you want to try it? I don't know what it, if it's going to, I think it's going to just sink to the bottom. Let's see, it's awfully big too. They might not view it as a uh, food. There it goes. I hope they are eating it. I wasn't expecting this so soon. If I can get them to go after a homemade food with the perfect ingredients based off of what they need for good growth as a juvenile, imagine how quickly and how big they'll grow and how healthy they'll be. Look at them, they just go nuts over that. That's a nice little chunk of piece. So, I mean, if you got piranhas, give them a piece of beef. Right? That's what I used to feed my uh, piranha, you know, 20 years ago, is I ch chuck in strips of uh, liver or beef heart or whatever case might be they're gonna run right through this but yeah anyways I'm gonna I'm gonna make them something that's actually going to be far more nutritious and uh, a little easier to eat mind you there's 30 red belly piranha in here just babies but they are putting on some size once I get them onto this uh, new food they're going to get tremendously bigger tremendously faster so will the discus the discus are a little bit behind but and where I like to have them in size and shape, but I'm gonna fix that real quick. Diet and water quality, if you wanna raise your fish and get them big. I'll run through some of the ingredients here really quickly. First and foremost, you guys know that beef heart, for example, has been a staple in fish food for a very long time. I'm just cutting off all of the fat first, for a specific reason. I think you guys will probably want me to go into a little bit in depth of the, the ingredients and why we're using them the way they are. And I'll do that as I quickly prepare this food because I got some other stuff we gotta do. So while beef heart's been a staple as a do-it-yourself fish food ingredient for a very long time, simply because it's cheap, commonly available, and has a really high protein content and fish readily accept it. You guys just seen that, uh, for example, with the, uh, with the piranha. There is a downside to it. The downside to beef heart is it, well, it comes from a mammal. It comes from beef, a cattle, cow. Um, and because of this, it's fat has a high boiling point, meaning the fish can't actually digest it, so it gets stored in their organs and cells and whatnot, essentially lowering their lifespan, shortening it per se. So the first thing I do when prepping beef heart is I cut off all the fat, or at least as much as I can. Beef heart's still a great ingredient for your fish food though, even though it has that risk of um, the fat getting in it and not being all that healthy for the fish. Uh, obviously I mentioned that they readily accept it and uh, very high in protein. Uh, for every 100 grams of beef heart, there is 18 grams of protein. So beef heart's at around 18% protein, overall protein. Now beef heart's actually high in iron as well as B, uh, B vitamins. Now, as you guys know, iron is a mineral needed to carry oxygen from the fish's gills to the rest of its body. 
Iron also helps muscles store and use oxygen. So just based on that very little bit of information, you know how important iron can be to a fish's diet. What about those vitamin B? Well, all B vitamins help convert food into energy. So to summarize, beef heart is of course high in B vitamins, iron, readily acceptable to the fish. They love eating it, packs on some size, pretty affordable as well, and easy to work with. Plus, it's long time proven in the hobby as a key ingredient in many diets. Beef heart's also been, in fact, this diet right here, or this little thing, if, if I had access to like the health stores and stuff right now and, and other things that uh, I like to use as ingredients, I would have got them, but this is just a quick, easy, harmless uh, little concoction I'm making that I know the fish are gonna like. Yeah, whenever I feed this do-it-yourself food, I get explosive growth, breeding, etc. Um, at one point when I was telling you guys how to breed discus, because I was breeding them like crazy, there was there was like certain key components to success. There were certain like little things that I guaranteed myself, like if I didn't do it this way, I wouldn't have been breeding discus in those numbers. And uh, the little key to success, in my opinion, when it comes to breeding discus, is of course not only water quality and the ideal environment, etc., but diet was the uh, was the nail in the coffin type of deal when it came to success with breeding them because not only did the adults eat it when I drop in this food, when the fry were done um, eating the, the parents' slime coat, they would venture throughout the tank looking for another food to eat. And instead of trying to get them to eat something else or trying to do something you know different for them as, as opposed to what I was doing for the parents, they would go along the tank and they would find the same food their parents were eating, which was a puree of this stuff. The moment I started doing that is the same moment I began to have success with breeding and raising the fry. Now, if you guys are going to uh, be doing a diet like this of some sort, and you only want to add one meat, my suggestion would of course be the beef heart. But, I like to add a couple different types of proteins for a couple of different reasons. Right now, I'm adding in some market shrimp, big ones. Shrimp's not only high in calcium and potassium, but it's about 20% protein as well. Technically higher in protein than the beef heart. A little closer to their natural diets as well, being a shrimp. And, uh, but I don't get the growth that I do at a beef heart as I do with, uh, I don't know, vice versa. I get better growth with the beef heart than I do the shrimp. That's why you'll see a lot of times I'll grab a bag of shrimp and I'll just feed the shrimp whole to my stingrays. There's no way I'd feed them a puree though. They just make a complete mess out of it. But you could technically, um, for some of the smaller fish, I grab a shrimp and I just break it up into a ton of pieces and I feed them that and they love it. Now the other things that I like to add into it are veggies gotta have your veggies. I just get baby food that's already pureed. Um, usually you get these in little cans and little tiny little bottles. I don't think they make those anymore and everything's starting to come like this, but peas are a superfood, literally a superfood, only next to spirulina. I got everything on the table here from my local uh, grocery store, nothing fancy, it wasn't expensive or anything like that. Uh, so I suspect you could do the same thing. So if you're in a bind and you need some sort of fish food for your animals, you can get, uh, just go to your local fish store and do it there. And then, fresh clove of garlic. Well-known food enhancer, entices them to eat it, and has, of course, anti-parasitic properties. I hated that I had to buy the whole thing just to get this little thing. <laughs> Blend it all up. This is a pretty well-balanced diet. I'm not particularly too proud of it, and it's not gonna be my go-to mixture, but it got everything important to me in it. Um, I would have added in some, uh, a staxithin as a color enhancer, arguably the number one uh, color enhancer on the planet is a, thax a staxithin, helps with the pinks and red coloration. Spirulina, in fact, is gonna help with uh, blues and greens in your fish coloration, but I'm not focused on that right now. Garlic clove. You just wanna break it. 
like so. I'm going to be cutting this up into a puree. Um, technically, all of this is not only fish safe and good for them to eat, but if you want to have a bite, feel free to. You can do whatever ratios you want. Find out what your fish like and what your budget is and whatnot. You know, um, I made enough videos to give you enough ideas and then wrote about it extensively in the book. I mean, no, no, vi no video could ever be as inclusive as that book is, but. Now, spirulina. Don't need a lot. It's like a teaspoon for every pound of food or so. It will stain the food. It will stain anything it comes in contact with. So be careful. See it now? It's literally just black. Pureed shrimp looks like uh, potatoes, mashed potatoes. Now the fun part. Take a freezer bag. I've recently started using smaller ones because when I use a bigger one, I'm opening it and closing it for too long. It ends up getting like freezer burnt and stuff. How am I gonna get this in there without getting filthy? Put some in. You see, any fish could eat this, a paste. Not big monster fish, they'll just make a mess out of it. But your tiny little fish, tetras of any sort, they'll love this. Um, discus, smaller fish, fish that have smaller mouths, etc. You don't want to give this to an Oscar, they'll just make a mess out of it. A scoop or so in there, flatten it out. Then we're gonna toss this in the freezer. Well, I gotta repeat that process 10 times, but put this in the freezer, and then when we wanna feed it, we snap a piece off. Snap that piece off, frozen, just toss it in frozen, it'll sink to the bottom, the fish will pick at it as it slowly dissolves. Only feed as much of this stuff as they actually will eat within about three to five minutes. Otherwise, this is this is so high in nutrients and organics and uh, proteins that it's it's going to pollute the water for sure. I haven't made do it yourself fish food for a few months. I always forget, always forget something, a little something. There's always so much to remember, but that's why I bought a book <laughs> or bought it, wrote it. Link is in the description. Build, make your own fish foods and. You know, a real breakdown, not a quick video where I have to try to keep you entertained, etc. Real video um, on fish foods, stands, lids, bracing, building the tanks themselves, filtration, which is my favorite chapter. You name it, it's all in there. 552 pages, 60 bucks, shipped anywhere in the world, shipping's included plus behind the scenes videos, there were videos, 20 videos that were made to go along with that book, you get that as well, and the ebook. It's pretty cool. Great. Here's my receipt. Yeah, the shrimp was 6.99, so seven bucks a piece. The peas were three for five dollars. The meat was 10 bucks, I'm rounding up. Garlic was a dollar. The spirulina was 36 bucks, most expensive part, but that'll last me two or three years. So like 50 bucks. And I'm gonna have one, two, a bag of these. I'll probably take a week to feed. Yeah, about a week. We'll see though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably about three months supply of food for like 50 bucks. All right, as I'm bagging this up, why don't we, why don't we take a little scoop here? Um, I don't like feeding this when it's, you know, a paste, because keeping it frozen keeps it together a little bit better, but let's go feed them some of the fishes. I think we'll give it to the discus. Oh, did you guys finish that beef art? Or are you still eating it? Probably still eating it. I gave you a lot. Discus. off the spoon yeah when it's frozen it won't uh, when it's frozen it's gonna sink interesting enough they're already biting at it and eating it and curious about it I knew that was gonna happen though look at that everybody wants some yeah some of these discus are 
pretty skinny and I'm looking to put on some uh, weight for them. And this is going to do it. Look at them all eating it. Get up there, guys. They can taste it in the water now and everybody's kind of losing it. They taste that garlic. They want it. Gonna have a bunch of fat fish here soon. <laughs> Look at even the one over in the corner that was hiding. Doesn't want to eat nothing. Coming out. All the discus are out. Although the food's up there now, floating back there. So that might uh, be a while before it sinks. Anyways, <laughs> they're all going nuts. You get the idea. How much would it cost for you to eat a tablespoon of this? How many likes are you willing to give me for me to eat? I have a very weak stomach for me to eat a tablespoon of this. If you guys get this video to 20,000 likes, I'll defrost some and eat a nice heaping teaspoon, tablespoon, until my mouth, but <laughs> I'm not gonna be happy about it. All right, I gotta get back to bagging this, guys. I hope you guys enjoy your day. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more things like this, make sure you subscribe if you're not already. Also, I've got something really big planned that I'm announcing shortly. Might want to stick around.